Football has become more about the merit of the rich. Clubs with more money will buy the best players, get the best facilities in place and also get the best managers to get the best results. But this year has changed all of that. The big giants have had to take a back seat because the underdogs have been on the rise. The reason we are talking about it here as the league season is drawing to a close is that it wasn't just one club that rewrote a script that has been passed down the ages, which is spend more to reap more rewards. And while it's fascinating to watch clubs with history and stature win and further their legacy, the underdog story is what we truly live for. Like the Europa League final last night that saw Bayer Leverkusen go up against Atlanta, two clubs with close to nothing in European history had reached a final. Now, if the same two clubs had reached the final last year, it would have been either a, a little shocking, of course, but also probably dull, but not this year. And you could tell so by just the cheers and the excitement that fans were showing as they were building up to this clash. I hope at least 1 0 for Atalanta. Uh, I think Leverkusen are going to win 3 0. Right, like the fans are saying, everyone had their money on Zabi Alonso's Leverkusen because they clinched the German league title against all odds. They dethroned traditional powerhouses like Bayern Munich. And while Bayern kept attracting big players like Harry Kane or relied on their past, Leverkusen was busy creating a new one. They kept faith in youngsters and gave Zabi Alonso freedom to explore. And that too with limited financial resources, not just the Bundesliga triumph that made their campaign special. It was Leverkusen's unbeaten run of 51 games across all competitions that earned them the tag of never losing. A club which was called Leverkusen for not winning a league title in 119 years, always losing the important games was now being referred to as never losing. But that unbeaten run had to end someday, right? And it came against another club that has punched above its weight this season, Atlanta. The Italian club ended Leverkusen's 51-match unbeaten run last night. They beat Leverkusen 3-0 to clinch their maiden European trophy. A club that had not won a single European title in their history. So while the famous Italian clubs AC Milan, Juventus and Inter Milan were busy licking their wounds, Atlanta was busy ending Italy's 25-year-long trophy drought. They did it in 2024, this year, the year of the underdogs. Atlanta's major honour before this was their Coppa Italia triumph that came way back in 1963. For years, the club featured in the second division of the Italian league, Serie B, where they won six titles, and even in the third division, where they won the title in 1982. So clearly, the Europa League triumph was a major achievement for them. And just like Leverkusen, they didn't attract big players either. They just stuck to the old method of football, make the most of the resources they have, and put their faith in the youngsters. Just like the Europa League final hero, Adimola Lukman, the winger who scored three goals in the final has scored 30 goals ever since his arrival at the club in 2022. And everyone celebrated this triumph, including Lukman, whose dance moves are just as electrifying as his football. for instance, has been a part of the club's fearless approach to football. Express and play your heart out. No need for over-planning. They attack when it's needed and defend when it's required. Relying on simple principles of the sport, because before Leverkusen, they beat the likes of Liverpool to reach the final. Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool that has won Champions League, Premier League title in the recent few years. And so you sensed it then maybe that the team that beat Liverpool was most likely to probably go all the way. The fans, of course, loved every minute of this coming-of-age triumph. Oh, 
passiamo noi! It's an historic win. It's crazy. It's uh, unbelievable, guys. It's not describable tonight. It's uh, Cinderella of Europe that it's coming to the stairs, like to, to the top. It's amazing. Yeah, Cinderella of Europe. I'll remember that phrase. But it isn't just Leverkusen or Atlanta that have been shattering the glass ceiling. In the German league, there are two more clubs that have upset the world order. A league that is usually considered a one-club race, dominated by Bayern Munich. It saw two more sides, apart from Leverkusen, questioning the set pattern. Despite encountering formidable opponents in the Champions League, Dortmund defied all odds and made it to the final. Their thrilling performances on the pitch have captured the hearts of fans worldwide, proving that success isn't always about money. Without the star powers, the club has flourished under Eden Thursik. Dortmund are known for producing talents and they continue to do so. Just like Leverkusen and Atlanta, they too have focused on building the club around youngsters. While Dortmund has the experience of Marco Ruiz, they also have youngsters like Bainoe Gietens. Again, not big names, but players who play natural football. The concept of sea ball and strike ball. Take VFB Stuttgart. The club finished second in Bundesliga. They've qualified for the Champions League next season. That's massive. The club has experienced mixed fortunes over the years. Before 1990, the club enjoyed remarkable success. Thereafter, it was relegated to the lower division of German football and it was only in 2020 that Stuttgart was promoted to the first division. So for them to qualify for Champions League is a massive achievement. And if it wasn't for Leverkusen's dominance, a lot of the talk would have been about this side too. That's the other coming, the common trait here between these clubs, a club that is grooming young talents and it's seen across all these clubs that are considered the underdogs from their midfield to defence and even forwards. The average age falls under 26 in Stuttgart, the oldest being their goalkeeper Fabian Bredlow who is 29. Now the rise isn't restricted to the Italian league or the German league alone, in French league too, club Stade Brestoi have punched above their weight, securing qualification for next year's Champions League. A club that never featured in Europe, Europa League, playing in the Champions League would be huge. And unlike Stuttgart, Brest are in sleeping giants, their best ever finish in the French League has been eighth. And even in the second division of French League, they only won the title once in 1981. So all of these clubs have shown that regardless of financial constraints or lack of star power, they can still thrive and perform. Because money might attract star players, but will that mean they can function as a unit and succeed? These clubs have proved that football is simple. Just focus on the basics and groom young talent and you're good. Leverkusen, Dortmund, Stuttgart and Brest have shown us that success is not determined by the size of the pocket, but by the strength of the spirit. And the common factor between all these clubs was their focus on utilising the resources they had and make it count. Maybe a lesson for all the big clubs out there who feel like spending money is the only path to success. There are many more frugal, more rewarding ways. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.